Yeah, you are. Okay. Well, there we go. Uh, finally. So listen, just to let you know, Mr. like I said before, um, you know, I, I, I started my, my YouTube channel just to just record history. You know what I mean? It's not monetized. It's not, it's not, it's creative yeah. comments and all that stuff. But the thing is, so much stuff has been happening. You know, I, I really need to go back to what I was trying to do, which is to chronicle certain things that nobody else is chronicling. And one of the things is really the history of BAI from, from certain perspectives, you know? Uh, so, I mean, uh -huh. you know, I know things are happening all the time and we're up on the things like that. So if we could just talk about BAI right now, some other time, maybe if we whatever, because, you know, stuff, other people talk about that stuff. And I really yeah, want to start sure. from what, yeah, sure. So I really wanted to start really from from your your first inkling because you you mentioned A.B. Spellman and stuff like that. Just 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 let, let, let me start from there, and I'll you know we'll we'll do stuff from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, as um, yeah, I guess I've been fortunate because I've always been exposed to our, our music on a very high level. You know, my mother had seventy eight. You know, she had Charlie Parker, Charlie Parker All-Stars. So, you know, by the time I was, you know, seven or eight, I could, um, you know, Hot House and Night in Tunisia and all of these things because, you know, it was something that was played in my home. Um, that love of that music continued in me. And, um, you know, by the time I was a teenager, uh, I was able to go ahead, go out to clubs. I would you know, go ahead and try to make myself look older. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so you're talking like the beginning, the pipe. beginning sixties, right? Like, you know, 62, 63, 64 when? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say, you know, 64, 65. Five, you know, I was going to concerts when I was in high school. I remember uh, we went. Uh, I took my my girlfriend from high school to a uh, concert at Lincoln Center man, that had like Thelonious Monk and Donald Byrd, all different kinds of folks. Uh, the first concert I remember was a concert that my mother took me to, which was uh, Count Basie, um, the Jamal. Mm -hmm. Can't remember everybody who was there. So mm -hmm. I mean, this is something that's that's been in my blood for a long time. Well, I, I, have to, I have to ask you: Do you remember what 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 was your girlfriend's reaction? Was she at, at your level also? What? Oh no, no, not at all, man. Uh, you know, one thing I, you know, Donald Bird was playing, and I'm saying like, wow, you know, because he couldn't at that point make you know all of the notes that he was doing, and I said. You know he's got a problem with his lip. And she said, "His lip? Can he can he replace it?" <laughs> and I'm like, oh, "Wait a minute." <laughs> I remember I took a John Handy album from John uh, Handy at the Monterey uh, Festival. I got to say this also that when I was in high school, myself and one of my partners, we would go to some of the stores and we would steal record albums. Oh, stop! Stop! <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on, just a second, hold on, hold on, wait, hold on, wait, hold on a second, hold on one second. I've told the story, but let me ask you, what, what high school was you, what, what high school was you at? Bronx High School of Science. Okay, so you were, you were one of them genius people, okay, no problems. Look, I went, I was at, uh, uh, I, you know, I lived in the South, you know, I lived in the Patterson Projects, and we had Hearn's mm -hmm. Department Store, and the first albums I stole, I stole, um, I stole a Sidewinder, and also, um, uh, Charles, okay. L Charles yeah. Lloyd's Forest, Forest, Forest. Those two first albums I stole. <laughs> oh man, because they me. had good stuff. You went to, you could go to uh, Hearn, Alexander's, yep. Corvette, yep. and they had good record sections. Excellent. Yep. So, you know, I would go ahead, you know, I would take uh, New York Times with me and throw the albums in, you know, in, in the Times or whatever else it is, and then try to. Scoop my way out. I got busted once. Uh, it, you know? And it, they, didn't, they didn't do much. I mean, no, they just said, you know, no, we're going to go I got to keep on hammering you on this. I got to keep on hammering you. So, of course you went to, of course you had the times because you went to Bronx High School of Science. Yeah. You know. Whether I read it or not, I could carry it under my arm. You know, that was one of the things in terms of, 
you know, looking older and sophisticated yes. and all this stuff, you know, coming from the projects, because I grew up in Throg's Neck projects, mm-hmm. which, of course, Patterson and Throg's Neck, we were, you know, always in competition some kind of way, although you were in the South yeah. and we were way, way distant yeah. in the North. Yeah. And it was very difficult to get to Throg's Neck because, you know, after you took the train, then you had to take a bus yeah. Go ahead and get there. But, you know, we had some folks, you know, some folks, uh, you know, from Patterson used to yeah, hang out. You know, some of the gangsters or whatever would try to come over here and, you know, talk yeah. to some of the girls and throw yeah. and neck and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. So it, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was I, interesting. I, you know, I, had but, that, I had that problem with, with, with Queensbridge Project, man. I had a, had a girl uh, that invited us over to Queensbridge, so I came. And they, it was a setup, man, but but we got out of it. It was funny, but yeah, I hear you, man. Those those are the days. So 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 what else? Yeah. Was, so so keep on going. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. So, so anyway, uh, you know, I went to high school. You know, I was listening to the music, and again, it was a matter of sophistication, man. You know, it was. You know, you 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 get the uh, Miles Davis album, My Funny Valentine, which has the polka dot tie, and then you go out and say, "Well, like, yo, man, I'm gonna get me a polka dot tie." And you went to the store and you bought a polka dot tie, so that if in fact you had to go ahead and wear a tie somewhere, you would go ahead and you would have a tie like Miles. So it was a matter of being cool on another level. You know, it. it was this and. And expanding your consciousness culturally and intellectually. Yep. So, you know, people like Amiri Baraka, you know, uh, A.B. Spellman, which the, the book originally was Four Lives in the Bebop Business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so you go ahead and get that and read that and become, you know, conversing about the lives of people. In that book, you've got Herbie Nichols. Sonny Rollins, Jackie McLean, you know, so you become conversant about these guys. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 1966, I graduate from high school. I go to New York University. And uh, one of my rituals was, I mean, I would always stay up late at night or whatever. And you would listen to various things on the radio. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I remember very early on, uh, WADO, WADO Radio, at Symphony C yep. at night. Yep. So what I did is, uh, you know, my mother bought me, and this is why I was, you know, really young then. I guess I was, you know, 10, 11 or whatever. I had a little transistor radio. And what I would do is I would go ahead and put it under my pillow and, you know, go ahead and turn it to uh, W-A-D-O, man. Now, now remind, I, I, know, I, I remember the call letters, but was, was, that wasn't even in New York. Was it that broadcast in someplace else? What, what, what? Probably like Jersey or something yeah, like that. Yeah, man, you okay. know, but they, uh, you know, who knows where that transmitter was. But, you know, you could go ahead and hear it. And then the other thing is that this was still AM radio. Yeah, that's right. That's which right. meant that at night, that that signal could go ahead and bounce all over everywhere because, you know, you could get at night, you know, with the clouds and, you know, everything else going on, you could get stations as far away as like Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, anyway, you know, all of this stuff, you know, and the music and everything else, you know, as a teenager, I started writing, I, you know, played, uh, you know, I was a pretty, you know, a pretty decent drummer, but, you know, playing the drums, all of these, all of these things. Mm-hmm. You know, we're doing all of this stuff, right? And uh, writing, uh, you know, it's interesting. I, I'm actually in one of the uh, premier anthologies of the Black Arts Movement as a teenager still. Mm-hmm. Okay? And, and that one is the new Black Poetry edited by Clarence Major. Ah. You know, it's that and the other one is Black Fire, uh, Miri yeah. Barack. Yeah, yeah, Larry Neal. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Miri Barack and Larry Neal, right? So anyway, you know, all of this stuff is going on. And you got to remember, 66 is the beginning of the Black Power Movement. Yeah. You know, here it is, uh, uh, Bukasa, Willie Ricks, and uh, Kwame Ture, you know, they're going ahead, probably starting in 65. You know, talking about black power, that's what we need. We need power, mm-hmm. black power. 
And, you know, 66, the movement really begins to take off. You know, there are all different kinds of things going on. You got people like uh, Elam Bey Braff and his brother Kwame with AJS, mm -hmm. Natural Standards of Beauty. They were also, you know, now, very heavily into the jazz scene. Now, remember, they're, they're, you know? they, 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 got their, they got their mentorship, if you will, from that, uh, from Carlos Cooks. And nobody talks about Carlos Cooks. I'm really sorry that I had a... I never got a chance to do a you know an audio documentary on Carlos Cooks you know because I can't yeah. you know, that's 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 a yeah. really lost one. People need to talk yeah. about him more because he really was more. Oh yeah, and some people do. Some people talk about Mr. Cooks. There's not a lot, a lot of folks who go ahead and do that. But now it's interesting because I think that the 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 the, the, the uh, It's a, it's a know, science. Uh, it's a science. It's a science of sound. People, I don't, oh, yeah. you know, people, it's a science. That's all I can say. Oh, people yeah. keep on going about this, you know, you know the, the geometry and the da 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 but it's all numbers. And music is nothing but numbers, you know, vibration uh -huh. is nothing but numbers, you know, frequency, if you will. Yeah. 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 So anyway, um, you know, by the time, you know, 1966 comes, I can't steal records anymore. So, you know, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, the stores are not necessarily car carrying the Blue Notes and Columbia Records that they were carrying previously. You know, I guess at different times I have a couple of dollars in my pocket or whatever else it is. So, you know, we go out, you know, we, again, I'm now I'm going to NYU. So the village always was something. But mm -hmm. now you think about what 8th Street used to be. Oh, yeah. You think about what St. Mark's Place used to be. Yeah, yeah. Oh man! I mean, there's, there's so much stuff going on. Do you remember uh, that they, do you remember they had this little record shop by um, the, the, um, right there on uh, I guess that Second Avenue or St. Mark's Place, right like, like the the the, the uh, let's say it's the Northwest uh, uh, corner or a little down there's a little, there was a tiny record shop next to that next to that um, uh, soda fountain place. It was a really tiny record shop, but they had some really extraordinary stuff. You know, they would get these well, demos was a in. Brother. There was a brother who owned a little record store that would have been on the, would that be the, probably the north, it wasn't the east, it was kind of like in the middle, because if you remember, you know, upstairs from where he was, was the electric circus. Right. Okay, that's, okay, that's on, okay, that's on 8th Street, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, St. Mark's, that's St. Mark's, yeah, yeah. Just remember. You're right? So you got St. Mark's place there. Also still, you know, the five spot. The five spot is on uh, uh, 8th Street there, on, mm -hmm. on St. Mark's place. Mm -hmm. You know, the club. And there was also the Dom, yeah. which was under yeah, Electric, Electric Circus, Circus. Yeah. which, you know, people used to go, you know, for, you know, the dancing and the grind them ups and whatever mm -hmm. else it is. But at some time, I remember like on Sundays, they had a jazz series there at one particular point. As a matter of fact, the first time I saw Cecil Taylor was at a set that they did at the Electric Circus upstairs. What year was that? You know? What year was that? Do you remember? Oh, man. That probably was about 66. Mm. Probably about 66. Because I, I, I forgot where I saw Cecil Taylor at, and I'm going like, oh, boy. <laughs> it wasn't as early as 66, though, but because I wasn't down there yet. But okay, go ahead, I'm yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, one of the things in terms of this is that, uh, you know, one of the, uh, you know, forward-thinking record companies was ESP Records. And the guy, uh, Bernard Stallman, I believe, was the, uh, you know, the, uh, the owner of uh, ESP Records. And he started recording all of these people, man. And this brother who had the record store, I can't remember his name. I, you know, I got to talk to my brother and he'll remember his name because we always call him by his first name anyway. And we went in there, you know, we would buy records and hang out or whatever. And, uh, you know, ESP records, because ESP records had, they had Sun Ra, 
Albert Isla, Giuseppe Logan, mm-hmm. Cheryl Sanders. Yeah, yeah. Probably cut his first uh, album as leader. Well, what, what, what was what was the color? What was the color of of, of the label? What the the color of the label? Uh, was it a dark man, green? Yes, P, I mean, it had different because uh, I'll give you an example uh, on Bell by Albert Isla. They had a limited edition hand painted record. Hmm. Okay. And I mean, some of the labels were like black and white. I mean, for the most part that I mean, I've got some of the original ESPs in my, my collection. I think a couple were like yellow and, and, and black, but it was like ESP, ESP disc. Yeah. Anyway, you know, ESP, uh, you know, when they were first coming out in terms of this Bernard Spalman, which I guess is like 65, 66, you know, they're going ahead. They had a, a uh, series of concerts mm-hmm. at um, the Astor Place Playhouse. That's across the street from the public, just about. As a matter of fact, yeah. the Blue Man group yeah, Blue Man, you know, I know. been in there for years and years. Exactly. But yeah. originally, it was the Astor Place Playhouse. Yeah, right downstairs. And a series. Yeah. I was still in high school when that was going on, because I remember. And uh, so that would have been like 65, 66, like I'm talking about, right? Mm-hmm. And they had a series of concerts. And, you know, we had to pick and choose, you know, myself and my, my brother. We said, well, he said he's going to see Albert Island. And I said I was going to go see Sun Ra. We were going to go see the same, same group yeah, or whatever, yeah. right? So uh, he went to see Albert Isla, and that was yeah. uh, a revelation to him. How, how much old, I went to see was your brother older or younger than you? Same age. I'd say my brother. He's not, but he's my brother from another mother. I got you. Okay, so okay, okay. Six you. months, mm. six months older than me. Mm. And currently, my tenant downstairs in my in my house. <laughs> oh, that's good. No, that's good. So, hey, the, the, fam- okay. the family, the family, the family. That's it, man. You know, you gotta be, yeah. you gotta be with collaborators you can trust <laughs> that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, anyway. So anyway, I went to see Sun Ra, and Sun Ra. They were coming from. I think probably at that particular point, Philadelphia. I I don't think they lived in Chicago anymore. I think they had moved to Philly because Sun Ra and the orchestra originally lived in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And then anyway, so they're in Philly and they were coming like, uh, you know, using a U-Haul and the U-Haul broke down and all the rest of this sort of stuff. So they're delayed and, you know, it's late. I got to take the train back up to Throg's Neck, all the rest of this whole stuff. It's like, can I wait? Can I wait? Can I wait? So we're just waiting and waiting and waiting. And then finally, Ronnie Boykins, the bass player, comes in with his bass. And he says, yeah, everybody's coming. They're going to be here. Now, I don't know how long we had waited. I mean, the, the concert probably was supposed to start like at 7 o'clock. And by this time, it's probably like 9 o'clock or whatever else it is, man, you know. And it's going to take a while to go ahead and get up uh, get back uptown and everything else. But finally, the band gets there and they play. And, you know, that was a revelation. I mean, that was the first time I saw Sun Ra in the orchestra. Mm. And, I mean, you know, we developed all of this stuff. For instance, when I became a part of the East, you know, uh, Sun Ra and the orchestra, you know, we developed this relationship between the East and Sun Ra. Yeah. You know, and the orchestra, man. It was, uh, you know, really, really amazing. But anyway. Then that would be know, interesting uh, because, you know, uh, 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 you know, you know, I'm a Henry Dumas, Dennis, and, and, you know, and Henry D- I don't know if you, maybe you probably crossed paths and didn't know it, but Henry Dumas was hanging out with Sun Ra from about, like, after that, about 67, I guess, 67, 68. So I don't know, you know. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Uh, you know, we crossed paths with a lot of people, you know, there was a lot of stuff, you know, beginning to go on. But, you know, back specifically to, to BAI, yeah. uh, A.B. Spellman had a program. And okay. he had a program I'm trying to remember. It's probably in the morning or whatever, you yeah. know, so. Okay, hold you know, on. Monsieur, Monsieur, can you hold on just a second? Because I want to label this, 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 this background as, as, as uh, part one. Let me, let me just hit this for a second and then we'll go to part two. Uh-huh. Okay, hold on. 